The uh, CD you've got here is a, is a uh, depiction of the freeway system in the Seattle area and provided by the Washington State DOT from the Traffic Operations Center up in North Seattle. This is a situation that occurred on January 4th of 2002, about 2.55 or so in the afternoon. As you can see by the map on the right here, most of the lanes up around the Linwood area at the top there where 405 and Interstate 5 come together are either green or blue. Blue means they're not instrumented yet. Green means they're at or near the speed limit and then yellow means they're going a little bit slower than that. About 255 there's an accident that takes place on the freeway right near that interchange and within a matter of a few minutes traffic starts to back up. If you look at the arrow up on the right you can see the, the uh, black area on the freeway there which depicts traffic that's at or near a standstill. One of the reasons is where the emergency vehicles are. We've got a couple of fire vehicles out here in the middle of the road. Uh, not the optimum place to put things and there's a lack of training nationwide on what you should do with emergency vehicles is these crash scenes. Now to their credit they'll get things straightened out. You see a vehicle moving around in there to get it facing the proper direction or get it out of the way and then they'll go over there here in a matter of a few minutes and move that fire truck that's parked in that right hand lane which is actually three lanes away from where the actual accident scene is. I like to call that the Walmart response and that is when all of us go to the Walmart store we have a tendency to drive through the parking lot until we get the closest empty spot next to the front door and emergency responders are basically the same when they do that. Fire trucks now out of the way as is the other aid vehicle. In fact they go ahead and go because they're not needed there. And now we've got um, more traffic moving as as we look at that overall scene there, it's being managed a little better than it was a few minutes ago. Now we'll go to the next 10 minute frame here. And again, I want you to pay attention to the opposite side of the freeway over there and see the impact that the emergency lights are having on the oncoming traffic. See them slowing down and stopping there. I call them rubberneckers or uh, gawkers or there's a few other names for them depending on what you uh, want, want to call them. I know down in South Carolina they were calling them gommers and they're gomming at my accident scenes. Now watch what happens. You've already got the, the patient's been taken care of. Fire department left the scene. The aid car left the scene. The patrol vehicles that you see in the scene there now only have rear facing lights and if you watch the other side of the freeway it quickly clears out. It had backed up for a significant difference or distance if you look up on the on the screen there and it had backed up for two three miles just based on the emergency lights in those lanes. Now it's starting to decrease and then you see that the backup in the northbound lanes there toward where this crash is and over on 405 also that you have about a total now of about 12 miles of backed up traffic based on that one accident scene. Southbound's pretty well cleared up at the scene they're just whipping right through there and one of the reasons is there's not a lot of forward facing emergency lights into those oncoming lanes. It's 3.30, so this thing's been going on about 35 minutes total, and they're just about completely uh, clear now. If you look up on the map on the right, though, you got traffic backed up now if you add it all up, but based on the scale down there of 5 miles. So you're looking at about 8 or 10 miles of impacted traffic, and there's 4 lanes. So if you, if you figure 10, 10 uh, miles and 4 lanes, that's 40 miles of stop traffic. That's about 300 cars or so per mile on an average basis uh, stopped in that lane. You go over on the other side over there on 405 which is uh, three lanes in that area and so you got another uh, probably 15, 18 miles of backed up traffic there. So as we get further into this you'll see that the impact even though they got that lane cleared out pretty quick continues on. So now it's 340 in the afternoon the crash is gone that's why there's no image on the left hand side and you look up at the traffic pattern on the top there. Now let's go to 350 and see how far it's backed up now. 4 o'clock. Of course, this is a heavy time of day. But have you ever been stopped on a freeway? You're going along and you're going about the speed limit. You come to a complete stop and you sit in the middle of the freeway and then you start up again. This is what may have happened. Now, 410. We take a look at that. and You got it backed up for miles down through that whole area. You got 420. 4.30. Now you look clear down into King County about 12 miles from the crash scene. Traffic stopped completely in the road. The crash had been gone for over an hour already and yet traffic has stopped 12 miles away. Now there's no 
way that we can stop traffic from backing up after crash scenes, but what we can do is certainly do a better job of managing the site, positioning vehicles better, reducing the amount of response that we have out there, and managing traffic through the crash scene, and also managing the use of emergency lights a lot better than we do. There it is, is uh, 440, now it's almost back into Seattle with that backed up area and if you look up where the crash site was it's it's clear up there it's moving right along so that's an illustration from the uh, Washington State Department of Transportation on the impact of these crashes on traffic and will help you understand that there are literally thousands of people that are impacted by these incidents and we urge everyone to do a better job of the overall management of the process and that's police and fire and transportation and towing and everybody else that works out there you should also note that in this particular episode on the freeway there wasn't any secondary crashes and that's due to the efforts of the Washington State DOT Traffic Operations Center to get variable message signs on letting motorists know where these incidents are occurring and which lanes they want them to move into. Generally the signs on this time of day are off and on before the responders even get out to the incident scene and make it a lot safer for the responders as well as the motorists.